There were days where I, I said through tears, just sobbing to Michael, like, I can't do this. I can't do this one more day. I can't be pregnant with a baby that's not going to survive. I can't walk around feeling him move and just know that the light at the end of the tunnel of pregnancy, that I don't get that. You know, I think I'll always get to February 12th and just remember that this date was, it was kind of the date that our world shattered. We went in for our 20-week ultrasound. What are we doing? <gasps> We can find out if you're having a brother or a sister. We took Evie with us. We wanted her to see her brother or sister on the screen, and I thought that it was fine. I mean, I... From what we knew, what we thought we were looking at, everything looked okay. She left, said she needed to come back after the baby moved to get a better picture of, a heart, of the heart. But she was gone for a really long time. And um, I remember looking at Michael. He was, like, playing with Evie. And I was like, do you think something's wrong? And I said, no, like, no, that's not what it means at all. But something was really wrong. And it, it wasn't just one thing. It's a lot of things. It wasn't just he has a heart defect. His skull wasn't shaped properly. There was fluid in his abdomen. There was a hygroma, which is a, a cystic hygroma on the back of his, of his head. I, in my mind, it was just a whirlwind. I mean, we were in that office. We were told basically um, it doesn't look good. She didn't say that her baby wasn't going to live, but she said, I'm really concerned. You have a very sick. sick baby. You know, they gave us, they gave us like three to four weeks of him surviving with all of his complications. Every time we went into the ultrasound room, um, the doctors would say, he, you know, what we know about James is that he is a fighter. And the more that we heard them say that, the more we realized, like, we gave him a great name. Like, his name is so appropriate. And he, he didn't just fight for a couple extra weeks. He fought for 11 weeks. He fought for three months. Um, we kind of had this, this mantra, this phrase that we kept saying, and we would say it almost every night when we were praying. It's like, God, we, we're going to love him while we have him. And, and whether that's only in utero, you know, while Caitlin's pregnant, or if he's born and we have him for a day or a month or however long that may be, we're going to love him while we have him. The day that he was born, the prayer at the hospital was so unlike the prayer that we had in our living room the day we found out that something was wrong with him. We just had so much peace, and yes, it was sad, and yes, like, I wish that I was introducing our family to a baby who was breathing and crying and moving, and, but, like, for the situation that it was, like, there was so much more relief and peace and joy than I ever imagined being in a room in that situation. I know that God gave us a little boy with Down syndrome so that we would share a story and so that other people would just see an example of a young couple like valuing life and valuing a baby's life, even a baby that isn't expected to survive. Like we, we cherished every bit of life that, that God gave us um, with him alive inside of me. I think that there are going to be families that get news like our news. And they're going to hear James's story and they're going to think like, okay, they survived it, we can survive it too. And there's going to be moms who really just desperately don't, they want to know how to survive a season like this. And because of James's life, they'll have hope and encouragement that the, if we can survive, like they can survive. People ask us all the time, you're like, oh, nice to meet you. You know, how many kids do you have? And that's kind of hard to answer, um, but I think we've kind of got it down pat. I think our best response is, well, we have a 19-month-old, we have a baby boy in heaven, and we have one on the way.